Move over, Beyonce. Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield beat you to the title of best known African American concert artist of her time almost 200 years ago, and she did it without auto tune. Today, February 26, 2024, Lyle Station Historic School and Museum applauds the musical talent of Elizabeth Greenfield, known as the Black Swan, a play on the names of Jenny Lind, known as the Swedish Nightingale, and Catherine Hayes, known as the Irish Swan. Greenfield was born a slave in Natchez, Mississippi, between the vague dates of 1808 and 1826. Her enslaver moved to Philadelphia and manumitted her slaves, most of whom moved to Liberia. Elizabeth, however, stayed with her former owner in Philadelphia and attended a private school and studied music. She found employment as a music teacher in Philadelphia and then moved to Buffalo, New York to stay with relatives and friends. While she was on the boat ride to Buffalo, she played guitar and found she was compelled to sing. And sing she did, impressing Electra Potter, a white socialite who invited her to perform at private parties she hosted. Around 1851, Greenfield began singing professionally. An unscrupulous manager, Colonel J. H. Wood, took advantage of her professionally. He refused to allow black patrons to attend her concerts and mismanaged her income, keeping her in poverty and isolating her. Wood was also a supporter of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. Between 1851 and 1853, Greenfield toured the Midwest and East Coast, landing in Canada in 1852, the first black woman to perform classical music professionally in Canada. Abolitionists hailed her as a positive example proof that former slaves could excel in life. However, others ridiculed her and spread rumors that she was actually a white woman appearing in blackface. After her tour completed, she returned to Buffalo and stayed with the white family of Hiram E. Howard, the president of the Buffalo Musical Association. She helped raise their son, whom they nicknamed Greenfield, in her honor. Howard and Eli Cook, the mayor of Buffalo, arranged for her to perform in Europe, with her tour starting in 1853. To prepare for her tour, Elizabeth performed at benefit concerts in the Buffalo area and performed in New York City at Metropolitan Hall in order to raise the money to pay for her lodging and travel expenses. It was not a successful venue. The performance denied anyone not white admittance. During the concert, the audience laughed at her as she walked on stage, with her escort adding an additional insult of keeping his distance from her. Greenfield responded to the negatives by creating a positive. She apologized to the African-American community for their exclusion and then performed in concert to benefit both the Colored Orphan Asylum and the Home of Aged Colored Persons. While her European tour was not financially successful, she did give a command performance for Queen Victoria at Buckingham Palace, the first African-American performer to do so. After the Black Swan returned to the United States, she performed at many charity events supporting black churches and schools and was considered an inspirational figure. She also performed at charity concerts in the North to raise money to support the Buffalo soldiers of the Civil War who were not properly equipped by the government and once performed before a lecture given by Frederick Douglass. She later ran a music studio in Philadelphia and promoted other African-American singers and even opened an opera troupe, the Black Swan Opera Troupe.
Greenfield died in 1876, but her musical legacy lives on.